So you finally decided to give Star Wars The Old Republic a try. That temptation to play as that Sith warrior, slaughtering thousands of puny Jedi, or that trooper with his heavy blaster cannons. It's just too tempting, isn't it? Well, my friend, if you are somebody who is ready to check out Star Wars The Old Republic for your first time, and if you're a bit worried that maybe the MMO might be a bit overwhelming since it's been around for so long, then this video is for you. This video is also for returning players that might be curious about the state of the game right now, because today I'm going to go over 10 things that you need to know to get started in Star Wars The Old Republic. Number 1 understanding the basics. All right, so you're in-game. You watched those bonkers, incredible CGI trailers that are totally representative of the actual gameplay. You have created your unique, badass Star Wars hero that will most likely look like everybody else, because for some reason, everybody has decided to play as a human in this game. But that's okay. After all, every hero or villain has to start somewhere. Even if some of the starting zones have the color palette of pee and feces or a chronic sunburn, but at least the Jedi starting zone looks cool. Except for all the shark people. One of the first things that you're going to have to get used to when it comes to SWOTOR over other MMOs is the fact that every single quest, and I mean every quest, is fully voice acted with some pretty amazing cutscenes scattered here and there. The game offers a whole lot when it comes to its storytelling, being that it came from the creators of games like Mass Effect and Dragon Age, so no space barring. The point is, you can interact with the world in ways that really allow you to roleplay your character by making these important decisions on your journey to shape their personality. You might decide that your Mandalorian bounty hunter has a bit more honor to him than it appears, that your Jedi's dark past plagues him to drive further down that path, or you'll just go full-on power fantasy and murder or bang everything in sight. But you know, you do you. It's your character, and I'm not going to judge. Number 2. Unleash Your Sin of Pride now, as great as many of these quest lines are, you might be wondering, hey Nixium, you handsome Sith Lord, what if I just want to fully exploit my anime protagonist syndrome and not bother with the incel Nautilin whose wife left him for a seedy underworld bar gig where she dances for 10 you credits a night? Home. Well, luckily for you, there is a way to get around having to kill 10 sand people to collect their four skins to give to King David as a tribute. In Star Wars The Old Republic, this is known as the Way of the Purple Triangle. This handy little illusion Illuminati Pyramid is your key to not giving a shit about anything or anyone above your own ultimate rise to power. With these little purple guides to blindly follow, they will lead you to your class quests, ones that you should be used to seeing from your starting planet, and they'll also lead you to the planet story quests that will tell you what's going on on this weird planet that looks like everybody is either on drugs or made out of drugs. The point is, don't waste your time with anything else. Just do these purple triangle quests to progress your own personal story and to understand the lore of the planets that you're on. You can always go and visit the Lonely Nautilin and collect those Sand People foreskins at a later time. Number three, your own personal servants. Now sure, you might be starting your journey as some lonely, aimless twiddle D getting punked by low-level elite mobs like the noob that you are looking for your twiddle dumb. But before you know it, you'll be starting to surround yourself through your own Star Wars story with interesting characters with their own personalities and backgrounds. They'll also have their own ideas and opinions about what you do. And they tend to be pretty vocal about those opinions too, to my Sith warrior's annoyance sometimes. But guys, listen, maybe, just maybe, if you play your cards just right, you'll be able to land a hot alien girlfriend like you've always wanted. Or maybe you'll just be like me and get a kick out of shocking your alien girlfriend over and over. <laughs> Not that I don't enjoy the perpetual fear of electrocution. For every like this video gets, by the way, I will shock vet. Now, as fun as it might seem to bond with your companions. That's uh, interesting to hear. In SWOTOR, your companions don't just help you in combat, where you can even choose which role they fulfill, but they also do all of your crafting and gathering for you, either in crafting missions or out in the world. If you assign them to craft a dank new lightsaber for you, you can even watch it happen in real time on your ship. That's pretty cool. Number four, the best place to AFK. As you progress through your class story, you will eventually find your way to the hubs of your respective factions. These giant floating space corkscrews act as a home base for many of your upcoming adventures. From here, you can visit your combat style trainer, your crafting skill traders, the auction house known as the Galactic Trade Network or GTN, 
You can gain access to guild services like guild registrars in your guild's own flagship, purchase your own personal player housing stronghold, and a whole lot more. You'll also be able to access a lot of the game's dungeons and raids from this area, allowing you to deploy with your group of friends and guildies to the far reaches of the galaxy to take on terrifying foes, gain some epic loot, and level up, all while doing your best to ignore the general chat. Number five, judge me by my size, do you? Now I know you're excited, but one final thing before I let you embark on that mission to save or dominate the galaxy, okay? Let's talk about power. SWOTOR is a fairly easy game to pick up in terms of its difficulty. Now granted, if you run at a bunch of angry Sith Lords with nothing but a, but a holdout blaster, you're not going to fare so well. You're going to need to beef yourself up with some skills and some gear. Now as I mentioned before, as far as leveling is concerned, you don't have to worry too much about trying to overlevel zones or anything. And why? Well, first of all, you do get enough experience from your class stories and planetary quest chains to get you to max level without a worry. However, if you do decide you want to experience these side stories, which I do recommend doing at least once on both Imperial and Republic side, never fear on missing out on rewards. SWOTOR implements a level sync system, allowing you to enjoy content even if you outlevel that zone. This will also allow you to get rewarded for helping a buddy out who might be a bit behind you. This level sync also applies to most flashpoints, and it's a very convenient feature, I must say. Number six, how to be cool. I am not talking about gear or achievements. I'm talking about your character's epic looking drip. You can't go conquering the galaxy while looking like a guy who just robbed a Walmart. You are a mighty champion of the Galactic Republic or a powerful player in the dark politics of the Sith Empire. You deserve to be feared and respected by all those who see you, which is why you will either be grinding crafting mats to sell on the GTN like some lame real-life stockbroker, which keeps your mind racing through the night as you find a way to balance the checkbook of a fictional character, or you will pay $49.99 for some cartel coins to get that swanky new Obi-Wan armor that just came out that absolutely nobody else has, surely. I am a unique human being who must look fabulous at all times. And don't call me Shirley. Or just invest in real estate. Get into SWOTOR's real endgame of player housing by owning your very own stronghold, where you will blow all of your credits on every type of house plant that you can imagine until you find the right one. You might be dirt poor at the end of this process, but at least you and your pad will look fabulous when you show it off to your fellow root beer worshippers. Number seven, wars not make one great. Your class specific origin story missions are not the only content that pulls you into your own Star Wars saga. A ton of dungeons or flashpoints as they're called in SWOTOR, as well as raids, which are referred to as operations by the way, uh, they come with intriguing and ranging stories of their own. From fighting off an enemy boarding party in style, to taking on legions of savage rack ghouls and facing off against some of the most powerful foes in the galaxy. There are a ton of quest lines with interesting characters and stories that really let you immerse yourself into this Star Wars galaxy 3,000 years before the rise of Darth Vader and all the incredibly detailed lore that comes with it. Just be careful if you do your first operation not to fall through the floor of the Eternity Vault like I did on my first raid, because it kind of sucks to embarrass yourself in front of your entire guild. Number 8. Through sub fees, I gain strength. Now we gotta talk about the Bantha in the room, the subscription system of this game, and how it works. Now sure, it's easy to get swept up in the Star Wars music that I can't play here because of copyright striking. Thanks YouTube! And you're thinking to yourself, man, finally, uh, my own Star Wars adventure, I get to be a badass Jedi or rule the galaxy by starting my own root beer themed cult? Well that's cute and all, until you realize that you can't talk to anyone or wave at them because you're a broke-ass MMO player who already sunk all of their money into store mounts in World of Warcraft and can't afford a subscription to Star Wars. But never fear, a whole new world opens up to you as soon as you throw the cost of a Netflix subscription at Bioware to let you do the bone dance. By becoming a subscriber, you unlock access to everything the game has to offer, including all of the expansions up to that point of the subscription. Something that other games could learn from, but I'm not naming any names. Mm-hmm. Number nine. I got a bad feeling about this. Most newcomers to SWOTOR look at the game and think, wow, this game has a lot to offer. 
eight fully realized stories for each class going from levels 1 to 50, a ton of expansion content with PvP arenas, flashpoints, operations, daily areas, and a lot more. What's the catch? How are the developers at Bioware feeding their pet Ewoks? Well, you see, we gotta talk about another Bantha in the room. And that there's this thing called the Cartel If you're dumb enough to buy a new outfit this weekend, you're a big enough schmuck to come on down to the Cartel Market. Bad deals, dyes you can't reuse, RNG. If you think you're gonna find a deal on the Cartel Market, you can shove that out the airlock. It's our belief you're such a scruffy looking nerve herder, you'll fall for this bath of voodoo. Guaranteed. If you find a better deal on the GTN, go kiss a Wookiee. You heard me right, go kiss a Wookiee, you space turd. Because we've rigged this entire economy with such poor developer management, you'll be selling your entire supply of G Fuel for a sweet taste of that copium that you might one day spend $4,500 to get a bronze variety lightsaber. So yeah, th there's a cash shop in this game. Now don't worry, there's no gear to buy here, so it's not entirely pay to win like some other games out there. However, I must say, there are some prices in this here store that would make even Star Wars equivalent of Amazon blush. That doesn't even touch on the fact that there are some loot boxes to be found on here too. Another thing to talk about too is that currently SWOTOR is a, kind of in a bit of a hyperinflation crisis. You might initially think that 1 million credits is a big deal, until you see that some Star Wars beef jerky will run you 10 million credits on the auction house. This is partially caused by the large market for cartel items. Bioware has also been about as vigilant as the Jedi Council in the prequels when it comes to catching exploiters and doing damage control with the economy. So that doesn't really help matters either. And number 10, Big Swaggin, Crate Dragon. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been sitting around watching Star Wars The Clone Wars and thought, I wish I could get a little more of something like that. Well, the good news is you can. Star Wars The Old Republic has some excellent storytelling when it comes to all of its expansions that you'll eventually reach. You'll get to experience the rise of a Revanite cult to power, stop the Emperor's ascension to immortality, fight against the rise of the Dreadmasters as they play to overtake the galaxy in fear and hatred, stop the Emperor's ascension to immortality, try to save a dying planet from collapsing in on itself, and even stop the Emperor's ascension to immortality. All while meeting with interesting characters that you will actually care about, who will feel the real impact of the life or death decisions that you make as part of your own Star Wars story. But as a final tip, just make sure that you've got the right guild to hang out with that truly embodies the Star Wars The Old Republic spirit. Like the guild I made back when I first started playing again, all about worshiping Bark's root beer as a star deity. If you don't understand, by the way, what I've meant by all these root beer references in this video, you gotta see what it was like for me when I started playing The Old Republic again in 2022. You gotta check out this video next and see all the madness the Nixium community got up to in a galaxy far, far away, because I think after seeing this video, you're gonna wanna give Star Wars The Old Republic a chance to. Thanks for watching though, everybody, and I'll see you online.